OpenAI just introduced GPT 4.5 and it's probably one of the most interesting models that they have released so far. According to them, it's not a frontier model, but it's improving GPT 4's computational efficiency by more than 10x. However, the price of this is almost 30 times that of GPT 4.0. Now, the performance is better compared to GPT 4.0. But if you put it in comparison to the other state-of-the-art models, it, it's no way closer. So why exactly did they release this model? And I think the answer is in this post filed by Bob McGrew, who was the previous chief research officer at OpenAI. So he says, don't be disappointed that GPT 4.5 isn't smarter than O1. Scaling up pre-training improves the responses across the board, Scaling up reasoning improves responses a lot if they benefit from thinking time and not much otherwise. So the idea is that GPT 4.5 is a very strong base model and OpenAI is going to build on top of it. So the reasoning models that you build on top of it are going to be a lot more powerful than what we have seen so far. Now, this model is huge and it's the largest and most knowledgeable model yet from OpenAI. Now, we don't know the exact size, but to give you a perspective, uh, here's a tweet from Ander Karpal. He says, each 0.5 in the version is roughly 10x pre-training compute. Now, think about this. If we take that as a baseline, this is supposed to be 10x that of GPT-4.0 or GPT-4 and still is 10 times compute efficient. And even OpenAI is, is having trouble serving this 10x compute efficient model. So here's a tweet from Sam Altman, GPT 4.5 is ready. Now the good news is it's the first model that feels like talking to a thoughtful person to me. And he says, I have had several moments where I have sat back in my chair and has been astonished at getting actually good advice from an AI. The bad news, they're not going to be offering uh, this model to everybody to begin with. So he says, it's a giant expensive model we really wanted to launch it uh, to Plus and Pro at the same time, but we have been growing a lot and are out of GPUs. I think the only winner here is NVIDIA. They will be adding tens of thousands of GPUs next week and roll out to the Plus tier then. The most interesting part is that this isn't a reasoning model and won't crush benchmarks. And we can actually see that. But I think this is going to be an extremely powerful model as a base model for training further reasoning models. They also released the uh, system card, which has a lot more information than the blog post that they have provided. So first, let's look at the blog post, and then later, we're going to look at the system card. So they're saying that it's a preview of GPT 4.5, and it's the largest and best model for chat yet. Now, keep in mind, they're specifically focusing on vibes, not actual uh, coding abilities. And according to them, it's a step forward in scaling up pre-training and post-training. This seems to be really good at recognizing patterns, drawing different connections, and to generate creative insights without reasoning. Again, it's not a reasoning model. And this seems to be more focused on EQ, which is emotional intelligence, rather than IQ. So there are two different paradigms of training a large language models. One is uh, scaling up reasoning, which is this new generation of models like O1 or O3. Another example would be uh, Grok thinking, uh, Gemini thinking, or R1. And the idea is that the model can think and produce chain of thoughts before they respond. And this allows them to tackle complex stem and logical problems. But if you want to be creative and have better vibes, then they can focus on unsupervised learning that increases the world model accuracy and intuition. And that's how uh, GPT 4.5 seems to be trained by scaling up compute data along with architecture and optimization innovations. Now, the question is, are we uh, hitting a scaling wall? Uh, based on this model, it seems not to be the case. Although the performance of this model on benchmarks is not as great as people were expecting, now, they have posted this uh, the, the small snippets of responses from GPT-1, which was trained back in 2018, to GPT-4.5, which is the current model. And I highly recommend everybody to check this out because it really gives you a sense of 
how these models have evolved over time. So here's the question, what is the first language? And GPT-1, if you see, it's just basically repeating the same thing. GPT-2 was the first model that uh, actually kind of made sense. Now the responses are not that great, but it was able to generate more uh, cohesive responses. And if you recall, OpenAI at that point did not want to release GPT-2 because they were saying that it's too dangerous and people will exploit a large language model. And then moving forward, you have 3.5 where the responses are a lot more verbose. This is the one that really shook the world and it started this whole revolution. The GPT-4 Turbo, again, is a relatively verbose and you have then GPT-4.5. Now, based on your vibes and taste, you may like responses from GPT-4.5 compared to GPT-4 or Turbo or the other way around. Uh, but this model is more about vibes at the moment. And since their focus is on vibes, they have specifically focused on collaboration with humans. So they have taught the model a greater understanding of human needs and intent. And based on those trainings, it seems like the humans like responses from GPT-4.5 compared to GPT-4.0. In some cases, you can actually game this system of human preferences. An example is Chatbot Arena Leaderboard. I think some model creators have figured out that if the model is creating a lot more verbose responses, people usually like those responses. There are models which will score very high on Chatbot Arena Leaderboard, but their uh, practical life usage is limited. We'll have to see what happens with GPT 4.5. Now, as I have mentioned multiple times in this video, uh, this is not a reasoning model. However, the way uh, OpenAI is uh, framing it is that this could become smarter and more knowledgeable to create training and the models like these can serve as even stronger foundation model for reasoning and tool using agents. Now, in the current states, it's probably not a really good option for tool usage, which is kind of highlighted by this tweet from Varun Mohan, who is the CEO of Codium, who are the creators of Windsurf. So here he said, GPT 4.5 is rolling out on Windsurf. From our limited testing, it's more expensive, slower, and worse at uh, tool calling than models like Sonnet. Now, how do you use a GPT 4.5 in ChatGPT? So if you're a pro user, you should have access by now. For plus users like me, I will probably get access next week. And it's going to have the ability to do search. It will support files updates, image uploads, and will also be able to use the canvas feature. However, it does not currently support multimodal features like voice, video, and screen sharing in ChatGPT. If you are a developer, you can use this through the API. But they say that it's a very large and compute intensive model, making it more expensive and not a displacement of GPT-4. So how expensive? It's going to be $75 per million tokens. Now, in comparison, GPT-4.0 is just $2.5 per million tokens. Probably this is the most expensive model that I have ever seen. Now, in terms of the use cases, they say that it's designed for creative tasks uh, and agentic planning and is currently available in research preview with 128,000 contacts window. Now, how good is this on agentic or code-related tasks? Well, the results are not that impressive. So there are two different variations that are reported in the system card. One is uh, pre-mitigation and the other one is post-mitigation. And in general, it's a little better than the original GPT-4.0, but it always lags behind O1 and O3 mini. So this is an example of OpenAI research engineer interview questions. Now for multiple choice questions, it definitely does much better than GPT-4.0, but I think it's on par with O3 mini. Now on Sweep Bench, it does much better compared to GPT-4.0. However, what OpenAI did here is that did not include any other model, whether open weights or any other frontier models. So here is an example. If you put it in comparison with even open weight models like DeepSeq V3. So if you look at these results, you'll notice two things. A Sweep Bench GPT 4.5 scores 
38%. GPT-40, this is, I think, the original GPT-40, which scores 31%. The latest version of GPT-40 scores 38.8%, which is actually better than GPT-4.5. But then if you compare it with something like DeepSeq V3, it actually lags behind other state-of-the-art open weight models. And DeepSeq V3 is not the reasoning version, that is R1. And it's only about 600 billion parameters, which is probably multiple magnitude smaller compared to GPT-4.0 and GPT-4.5. So going back to Sam's tweet, it definitely doesn't do good on benchmarks. It probably is going to have much better vibes. But vibes only for creative writing, not for coding. In fact, even during their live demo, they didn't do a single coding task. And even on this blog post, you're not going to see a single coding task or coding demo. Now, to sum it up, again, I would say this is a very interesting release. It's probably not earth shattering, but the model may have better EQ compared to what we have seen so far. Given the price tag they have for the API, it's probably going to be next to impossible for anybody to run this in a production system. And in terms of access and pricing, I think we are seeing two different groups are forming when it comes to the frontier foundation models. One is like OpenAI, which is becoming more and more elite with more and more expensive features. On the other extreme, you have something like Google, which probably doesn't have the best models, but they're offering almost all their models for absolutely free, which is kind of crazy to think about. And even offering a lot more features if you look at the API endpoint. And then you have Anthropic right in the middle, which is not able to keep up with the demand because they're not able to source enough GPUs. And then also have uh, models coming out of China, uh, which usually gives you free access on their web interfaces. And their API prices are also very competitive. So let me know what you think about all this. Uh, I think there are some really interesting groups forming. Anyways, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. And as always, see you in the next one.